Hey, hey, hey. Home Care Business Academy. How are you guys this afternoon? So while we wait for a few of you to check in, we this is a midday pop-up live titled, Let's Talk About What Goes Into Your Client and Employee File. So you guys have been posting this for a lot. Um, a lot. I see a lot of them. Um, almost every day, two or three people post what goes in files, what goes in client files, what goes in employee files. So I figured if I was going to do a special for pre-Black Friday, um, that that would be one of them, obviously the forms pack, and also um, just kind of coach you guys a little bit into how to keep your files together, how to be compliant, what should go in them, because a lot of people don't even know what's to be included. So go ahead and uh, drop your name, in the comments where you're from hey nurse t something so i know you're here i'm going to go ahead and pull you guys up on another device so i can see your in your comments as you're coming on and we're going to get right into it um, i'm going to go into how to make a complete client file and how to make a complete employee file okay so go ahead tag your business besties this is your first time checking me out live i'm nurse t registered nurse, home care agency owner, and coach and consultant to uh, aspiring and current home care agency owners. Welcome to the Home Care Business Academy if you're new. If you are live, drop in the comments where you're checking in from. And if you are checking this out on replay, hashtag replay. So let me go ahead and see who's on with us. Hey, Amanda, I see you. Hey, Ira, how are you? All right, so y'all know Facebook does its own thing. <laughs> All right, so as you come in, I'll go ahead and acknowledge you because I like you guys to um, feel that I am interacting with you. Uh, I'm going to be asking for your feedback first and foremost, just by a show of who on, who, who's on here live. Who on here has complete client and employee files? Like you're, when I say complete, I mean your stuff is locked and loaded. It's legit. You're compliant according to your state. If you're in a state that's not regulated, you at least know what you should have and you have it. So if you if you are good to go, I want you to drop in the comments. You're good to go. If you need help, drop in the comments. Need help because we're going to be asking you to uh, drop your questions in as well. Let me help you. Okay. Um, so. We're going to start off with, uh, hey, Shante, how are you? We're going to start off with what goes in your employee files. Let's start there, okay? Because I think a lot of people fall short, and then what happens is they have, um, um, the state will come out and do, you know, reviews, or, you know, they get started in business, and, you know, they start hiring and end up in the midway with issues because they have not properly put together their, their employee files. So let's start there. Ira said she needs help. Awesome. Ira, drop in the comments what you need help with more. Client files, employee files, or both. All right. Um, so employee files. First and foremost, you need to have an application, right? Comprehensive application. What do I mean by comprehensive? You just don't want to name a date and an address and phone number on it. You wanna have, you wanna at least abide by normal regulatory rules. And when I say by normal regulatory rules, your your state might require you to have some things, but then there's regular uh, labor law rules, okay? That goes on your application. And so um, some of the things that I suggest you have, whether you're in a regulated state or not, obviously your applicant's uh, demographic information. Um, you want to have a date of application on there, like the day that they are applying. And you want to also have um, emergency contact. That's a huge biggie. Most states require you to have that. That's something a lot of people leave off. You would want to have emergency contact information on your application. You want to have at least a five-year job history listed and education. Um, 
Also, you want to have any certifications or trainings, especially if you're in a state that requires your aides to be CNAs, let's say. You want to, you don't want them to list any certifications. That way, you know, if you can hire a person, you know, in a personal care role, for instance, or maybe just a companion sitter because they don't have the proper requirements. So you want to have that on your application. Um, you can choose to list references, you know, if you like, or you can have a separate reference sheet. We try to keep things uh, together here. You know, the more concise, the easier on the applicant. Now, our applications are online, but this information can help you whether you're online or you're using paper. Because even if you have an online application, you still need to know what's entailed in it. So this is, will go good for both, whether you're on paper or you're online. But basically, those are the things that are needed in your application. If you are conducting background checks, it's probably a good idea to have somewhere on the application or have a separate form giving consent to a background check. All right. So let that be um, included as well. All right. So that's your application. I see a lot of mistakes with that. That's why I wanted to go in a little bit of detail of what actually should be on your application. All right. So we're still on employee file. So you have application. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to have a copy of their uh, state-issued ID, whether it's a driver's license or just a state ID, okay? News flash to some of you, if you are hiring employees, it is not imperative that they have a driver's license, okay? Um, unless you're hiring in a position for them to be transporting clients. But if you, if that is not in a job description, um, if they're not transporting clients, if that is, you know, in a job title, uh, by law, they don't have to have a driver's license. They do have to have a state issued ID. Obviously, if they're going to be driving your clients or transporting anything like that, they need to have a driver's license. Okay. You also want to have a copy of their social security card. You want to take a copy of it, not accept a copy of their copy. All right. Your tax forms you need to have an I-9 on every body who applies, okay? Now, that includes your full employees that are on W-4, okay? And also your contractor, your independent contractors. Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, I need a, a, a 1099 filled out for the contractors. No, you don't fill the 1099 out until tax time. What you need in their, in their file is you need a W-9, okay? So a W-4 for your employees who you are taking taxes from, W-9 on your independent contractors. Whether or not you can use each or when, that depends on your state regulations, and that's a whole nother training, okay? But for in your employee files, you do need an I-9 for everybody and either a W-4 or W-9. Documentation of any testing or screenings. Like if you're required in your state for them to have TB, um, then you need documentation. If you are doing COVID testing, which that's some things that are, that, that's coming up in some of the agencies, don't be a, be surprised if that comes up in your state. Um, but if you have to have documentation of any testings or screenings, it needs to be the copy needs to be in the employee file. Also, CPR certification. If your employee is required to have any type of CPR certification, that needs to go in there as well. If your employee has any type of um, training certificates, uh, licensure, if it's, you know, R and LPN license or a CNA or maybe a certified home health aide, any type of training certifications, degree, um, licensor, licensing, professional licensing, you need to have copy and documentation in your um, employee file, okay? Job description. You should really have a signed job description. Whether your state requires this or not, like my state requires it. Um, but whether your state requires it or not, you should always have a signed job description. That um, holds you, it protects you when you have the situation come up where people say says things like, oh, well, that's not in my job title. Why well, didn't do that? Because it wasn't in my job description. Or if it's some things that you're observing doing a review that's not being done, you can go back to it and say, hey, this is part of your job description. So you always want to have a job description and you always want it to be signed. And a copy of that is in the employee file. Any documentation of orientation, okay? If there's any type of orientation um, done, trainings, things like that, you need to have that documentation in your employee file. And um, 
last but not least, if you are running background checks, whatever the t determination or, you know, it's satisfied or whatever, that documentation needs to be in the employee file. So you need to have the, the um, release of information, you know, the, the um, release for background check, and you also need to have the actual determination that needs to be in there as well. All right, you guys. So that's your complete employee file. There are other things that you could put in there um, if you pick and choose. I know like in the farms pack that we're offering, um, there's tons of other employee files and those are optional like for your agency. But what I listed is what you, you need, okay? But there are other ones in the forms pack like you might want your, your employees to um, sign something saying that they learned about communicating with clients who have disabilities. You know, there's a statement in there for the employees to sign. There's also um, a compliancy agreement, okay, that they're uh, agreeing to be compliant with your policies and procedures or your employee handbook. That's in the forms pack. Uh, what else? Non-disclosure, confidentiality agreement. That's something you may or may not want to have, you know, that's in the, the, the forms pack. That's something that you might want to use, you know, in your agency. Um, but everything else um, is pretty much the, the standard and I think I went through all of those. Independent contractor agreement, that's also something that's in the forms pack that you may or may not want to use. You know, so you can pick and choose, but what I what I stated to you, you definitely, definitely should have. All of you should have, all right? So now let's talk about your client files. And this is a biggie because, you know, this is what has to keep you compliant, both with your state, even those of you who are in an agency um, that you may not be regulated, but you still want to have, you want to be fu functioning your business uh, as such, okay? So there are certain things that you need to have in your client file. Now, again, you always want to start by checking your state regulations, all right? Even if you if you purchase the forms pack, you're going to have 73 forms. Are you going to need all of them? Maybe. You may want all of them. Uh, you may not. You may want to pick and choose, but what you definitely need to do is make sure you're using the ones that your state requires you to use. All right. Each state is different. Um, but what I'm going to go through is some of the basics for most states. And then those of you, again, who are in a non-regulated state, these are the things that you really want to have. OK, number one, you want to have a client referral form. Anytime you're taking a referral, someone calls you if you're an, a one man show or if you have office staff or whatever, you always want some type of client referral form filled out. Um, so that is filled out. If you are outsourcing, let's say you're a one-man show, but you're outsourcing your calls, like if you work full-time and whoever's outsourcing, whoever you are outsourcing that work to, that function to, needs to have a copy of your client referral form. That needs to be filled out for every call that's taken. And it just has basic, you know, demographic information um, and information for you to call back at a later time to close the sale. Again, that's a whole nother training, you guys, in that marketing class is coming up, I want to teach you how to do that, how to close a sale. Because if any of you are getting calls and you're getting referrals and you're not turning them over, I can teach you how to close that sale. But it starts with the proper client referral form and you need to have one. Um, you also need to have um, a service agreement, obviously. Always, most states require it who are, who are licensed. And those of you who are in a non-regulated state, you need to have a service agreement. Why? because that is an agreement between you and the client as to what their rates are, as to what maybe some policies are, and, and as to the services that you are contracting to provide. So you need to have a service agreement. You also need to have um, a client identification form. That is like a demographic form that has all of your client's information, a responsible party, maybe their payer source, um, whether or not they, um, what, what their code status is. It's just a comprehensive form client ID form and everyone needs to have one in their client files you want to have a service plan or care plan Gina says do you know where to find a client referral form absolutely in my forms pack <laughs> Gina you should have known I was going to answer like that <laughs> yes all and just so you guys know all of these forms that I'm suggesting they're obviously included in the forms pack um, again, I'm suggesting to you what you should have. It does, that's not by far what all is included, but these are just some of the bare minimums that you should have. And also that's typically required by most states. Okay. I work in all states and most of them 
have what I'm suggesting they're requiring that okay um, so yeah you can you can the client ref, the, the uh, home care referral form is in the form of pay um, where was I service plan or care plan okay so let me tell you the difference because a lot of you don't know the difference between that verbiage service plan is the plan of care for any services that you're providing typically you're gonna have a service plan on all of your clients okay and people who are also using a care plan care plans are generally when you have some type of skilled care like a skilled nursing component or if you're doing um, personal care services so a service plan is just generalized you know what I mean and then your care plan is typically specialized I know here like for instance here in Georgia if we're providing skilled nursing care component uh, we have to have a service plan but we also have to have a nursing care plan so that's the difference the terminology is different it's typically when you hear care plan it's for a guided service if you got somebody you on fall prevention or memory care or something like that you have a care plan guided for that particular service your service plan is your overall service plan how many days a week that you're coming um, what they're receiving on each day really comprehensive so both of those types of plans are included you know in a, in a form of pay. that's why our pack is so it's so comprehensive you know we, we make it broad we make sure that you have enough of everything you need so for those of you who need some things and those of you who need others it's all included okay um, what else progress note you should have some type of progress note or a um, caregiver um, communication note I think that's how what it's called in the forms pack check with your state regulations if you're in a licensed state to find out what the you know the, the frequency of it is if you're in a non licensed state you want to have some type of communication it doesn't have to be maybe every shift what do I suggest okay so what I suggest is there should be a communication at each encounter whether it's something simply saying that the client's day was normal if there were some abnormalities if a supervisor had to be called but there should be some type of communication note for every visit all right you guys so that's something and if you're on uh, you know on a software system make sure you have that included in your forms or you know like we use access care and part of their visit when they clock in and they're doing their visit you know they have to do a note for every visit every shift so again that's optional and you check with your regulations to see what is required but you always want to have some type of communication note if you're delivering skilled services which means you're working under physicians orders then you definitely need to have a note and um, you know you also need to have a physician order form inside of that client file as well okay um, what else what else what else documentation of care so if you're on paper you need to have some type of document care documentation sheet all right whether you're providing personal care whether it's a companion ship whether it's um, sitter there need to be some documentation of care where they can check off date initial or whatever maybe you can have your caregiver sign just depend on how you want to do it but there needs to be some documentation most of you who are on paper like when I was on paper our care documentation was, was also um, what they needed in order to get paid like that's that's your 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 time sheet right so very very important because obviously you have to keep documentation of the care that's provided in your client home so you really need to have that in your that needs to be in your client file um let me see if I'm missing anything supervisory visit form most states have a time frame where you have to do supervisory visits so therefore that form needs to be kept in your client file if you're in a non-regulated state you still need to be doing supervisory visits Okay, you need to be making sure that the quality of your care is, is, is kept. So some type of supervisory visit and you need a form for that and that is documented. Both ways, you know, if you have, you know, here, you know, scenarios where you have um, maybe a client who's complaining about, you know, services and things and you go back and you look at the supervisory visits and when you've done supervisory visits, they've said every time that everything was okay. Or maybe you're noticing some things um, with your caregiver you just want to make sure that things are being done the way they should be that's what your supervisory visits are for so that form goes in your client file some and so those are like basics basic things that your your states uh, will require you to have and basic things that I 
my suggestion that you have regardless but here are some other extras that, that, that we provide in the form of pack that you may or may not want to use when it comes to client um, assessments. Some of you are doing assessments, some of you are not. Um, there's two type of, three types of assessments included in a form pack. You have your general needs assessments, your nursing assessments, your personal care assessment. Um, what else? Clients consent for referral and release of information. That's something that you want to get especially if you're you know corresponding with social workers and things like that you want to make sure you have the client's consent for release of information consumer rights client and consumer rights always provide your clients with that and have them sign a copy of that form all right that's another one uh, that's provided that you may not have known here's a biggie and i know a lot of you are not using this because we talked about this when COVID hit emergency preparedness plan that falls into your disaster plans, but every client should have an emergency preparedness plan. We're getting into the time of year where there's inclement weather, you know, uh, blackouts and, and, you know, power outages and, and natural disasters. Every client should have an emergency prepare, preparedness plan in their file. And because you guys gotta understand when you take on a client case, you're assuming responsibility for that for that client okay if you've got somebody that's alone on oxygen you know maybe confused or you know can't ambulate on their own or whatever the case may be in the case of emergency you have to make sure that that person you know what if there's an evacuation order at least part of your emergency preparedness plan could be you know having the the family contact member uh the family contact member contacted by your staff saying hey are you aware that there's an evacuation a process or procedure being mandated what are your plans of um, assisting this client and if there is none it's up to you it's your responsibility to contact the appropriate authorities to make sure that person gets the help they need so you have to have some type of emergency preparedness plan and that's not just for natural disasters you need to have it for medical emergencies for everything so that is a biggie that I know a lot of you are not using, okay? Um, what else? Oh, independent contractor and agency agreement. Those of you who are using independent contractors, you need to have some type of agreement. This is your contract rate. This is what you will and will not be provided as a contract. Definitely have some type of written and signed contract. That's something that goes in and I apologize, we were talking about client files, but that's something that goes in your employee files that I didn't touch on. So remember that. Um, but back to client files. You want to have some type of medication uh, listing. So if you're providing medication reminders, even if you're not administering medication, if you're doing reminders, how can your caregivers remind them on something that they don't know? So you got to have some type of medication administration record uh, showing the medication, what it's for see this is where your assessments come in play a lot of people think oh well i'm non-medical i don't need to do an assessment well yes you do you need to have a nurse if you can doing assessments because that's part of what they do they fill out that medication record so that your caregivers can follow it to remind them and they need to know what the medications are for so that needs to be listed on there you've got a caregiver at an entry level position they might not even be certified they might just be like you know like a, a care aide right and um they assisted mr jones with taking his blood pressure in the morning which all of your clients who's on blood pressure medication should be doing whether your cnas are doing it or whether they're assisting the client to do it themselves and let's say for instance they notice mr jones's blood pressure is low right but they also see on the medication record that mr jones takes Two blood pressure pills, because why, how do they know that? Because it says it, for blood pressure, for blood pressure, right? Or heart medication. You should be training your staff that before they assist Mr. Jones, somebody needs to be called. Maybe a family member, hey, Mr. you know, I'm here with Mr. Jones. Um, we were getting ready to do his meds, but I'm noticing his blood pressure is low. Do you want to call a doctor first? Or the first call should be to your agency supervisor, and they will instruct you on what to do whether to call the family member, um, if that agency, you know, has a nurse on duty that, you know, provides that type of monitoring or something like that. Whatever the case may be, you know, these are things that you need to have in place for the safety of your clients and the protection of your agency liability. All right? I'm going to leave that one right there. Uh, what else? 
some of you choose to have like notification of direct care worker status. You know, you might want to let your your clients know if your uh, caregiver out there is through your agency, or if they're through um, staffing or outsource. So that's something that's um, that's up to you if you want to use it or not. Some states require that, like Pennsylvania, for instance, requires a notice of direct care worker status. Hint, hint. So all of you out there, you self-starters in PA trying to pull together your forms and your policies and procedures, you need that form, okay? Another one, like I'm using, I'm stuck on PA. Why? That's my hometown, so I'm going to just stick on PA. Just as an example, and as a lot of you PA agency owners um, who are doing this on your own and trying to pull together your things, you know, another one is you're going to need um, a service information handout. Yep, you got to have a service information handout. And it's got to have your ombudsman name, number, for your counties that you service. So these are forms and things, you guys, that you are needing. So those of you who are posting uh, in here, hey, what goes in the client file, what goes in the employee file, I, nurse, she just laid it all out for you. Boom. Made it plain and clear for you what you need. Now, if you're needing help pulling these files together, my suggestion, start with a very good template. Where can you get that from? <laughs> and I can endorse it. Because I use the same forms. I've sold these forms to clients. My clients use these forms. Many of you have purchased the forms pack and can, and can attest that they'll help you. And you might want to tweak them, and you can. They're delivered to you in Word format, but you can, you know, tweak them to fit your agency need. But start with a good template. Don't try to recreate the wheel. If you're good at writing these things and putting them together and making them professional enough on your own, then God bless you, then do it. But just make sure that you're being compliant, that you have what your state requires and you have everything you need, okay? Um, transportation liability waiver. That's a biggie, a lot of people don't have that, right? But you got your caregivers out here driving your folks around. And then if something happens, you look crazy in the face because you got a huge lawsuit. You might wanna have some type of transportation liability waiver signed by your client, okay? So you guys, you know, that's, Basically, a roundabout in a nutshell, uh, some of the things you should have. Again, we've got your forms packs on 50% off. You can't beat it, y'all. It's like 73, 75 forms in the pack. Um, it'll help you, especially those of you who are asking, hey, I need this. There you have it, and I'm giving it to you for half price. I'm giving it away. All right? So get in there. Um, the, the link and the discount code is in the title of this live. Um, there have been uh, posts all day long uh, talking about today's special. If you haven't noticed, we're doing specials. all We've been doing them since last weekend and all the way up through Black Friday, okay, just to help you guys out, all right? Um, people wait for this time of year for all kinds of sales and everything else, clothing and Christmas items. Why not invest in your business, all right? So I'm going to take a moment to answer a couple of questions while I'm on here. Um, we got a few minutes if you guys want to drop your questions in the comments. I'm, I'm looking. Um, you know, if you have a question about a particular form, whether it be client or employee or what should be included in it, I'm here and I'm open and I'm ready to answer it for you. So I'll wait to see if any come through. Let your girl help you out. And just out of curiosity, those of you who are on here live while we're waiting for somebody who may have a question, drop in the comments for me if you wrote and created your own forms or if you purchased forms for your agency. Even if you're checking this out on a replay, I'm just curious to know um, out of all of you who, who see this video, did you write and create from scratch? Okay, not from a template. I mean, sit down from scratch and create your own forms. Or did you purchase forms like a template and, and, and tweak them? Or are you using a generic form, something you found off of Google? I just want to know out of curiosity um, what you guys are all working with. And I'm going to see who have the heart enough to actually put in there what they did. That's a show of, of character. Ooh, who has the heart to honestly say, well... I didn't write them. I didn't purchase them. I just kind of found something free off of Google. Cause that's okay too, if you know how to tweak them. If you know how to work with them and tweak them appropriately. 
you just want to make sure that you're doing that so that you know so that you don't run into any problems with your state or or any liabilities for not having proper documentation Erica <laughs> Erica I got my phone yeah you did Erica you a VIP client you got everything from me including the license and help everything so of course your forms came from me and are you and Erica you probably you still using the same forms or have you tweaked them have you revised them I mean I'm sure you revised and tweaked as the time go you know went on or are you still using the same original forms just out of curiosity it's okay if you are but I'm just wanting to know do you work with placement agencies no Gina I don't I don't work with um, employee if you're talking about staffing agencies so be um be a little bit more specific do you mean in my work do I work with people who own staffing agencies as a consultant or do I work with staffing agencies for my own agency meaning to get employees let me know exactly what you're saying Gina Makia says I took advantage of the sale on policies and procedures hey woo -woo. helped you too didn't it Makia tell the truth it helped you those policies are all written out for you all you have to do is tweak them little things if you're getting if you're getting the uh, template form just things like your agency specific information um you know it might be something you want to add or subtract or whatever but it's an amazing amazing um manual to start with and you can it's comprehensive and you can you'll use some of the policies now and maybe some things you might not need until further down the line so it's an excellent resource um congratulations to you and i hope you get all of what you need from it erica you tweaked and added absolutely i know you have because your business has evolved since you know so absolutely you have tweaked and added and that's what you're supposed to do jamie says i am in the very beginning phases of starting my business so i don't have any forms yet all right so jamie um um quick question for you are you in a licensed state what state are you in drop your state down there and uh let me know um or are you in an, an unlicensed state where you're just having to create your business entity and then get up and running on your own? Makia, you said it's worth it? Good. I, I like to hear that. And I gauge you guys for that because that kind of guides me toward what I need to do better or what I'm or what I'm okay with. <laughs> if you guys are saying, ah, oh, I could have used this or I could have needed that, then I know what to add um, to the nurse tea coaching products. So um, awesome. I'm glad it's worth it. And, and I'm glad you are able to work with it. I'm going to actually do, um, try to put together a training on how to really construct these things and work them out. I'm, there's one already in, in a quick start. There's a training on how to um, customize your policies and forms. But I'm going to do something for the group. Um, oh, yes, you're in Virginia, license state. Okay, so let me re remember my last VA client. Um, I don't think you have to provide your forms for licensing there. Um, you do have to have your policies and procedures, but you're going to need your forms for survey. I do know that. So when you get to that part of the process, if you need some help uh, with that, um, if you're looking for some help, just let me know. Um, we have licensed agencies in Virginia. Matter of fact, uh, we do a boot camp for Virginia. So that's something you're feeling like you're gonna need or maybe just the forms or whatever just hit me up let me know you guys we're not doing any boot camps um, for the remainder of this year because the holiday season and the months um, are shortened but the boot camps will resume at the beginning of the year so if that's something that you're interested in be on the lookout for that schedule um, obviously they are virtual we are not we haven't done I haven't done traveling boot camps in two years um, they're virtual which is good because you can attend from anywhere all right, and um, they're very good for you guys who um, want to get your state licensing process on the ball, but you don't know where to start. You don't know what policies you need. You don't know what's required. You don't know how to upload if you're in a state that's, you know, electronic upload. Um, yeah, check us out for the boot camp if there's something that you think you might need. Um, so Gina said, do I work with agency owners in terms of consultation? I was recently licensed by the Department of Health for Home Services Placement. Okay, so you're a placement agency. So um, most of the clientele that come through me are home care agency owners. Um, but I'm sure if, you know, if you wanted to do consultation in terms of, you know, things that you need for placement, we could go over it. 
I'll go over what your state requires and I can help you in terms of the business side and things that you'll need. So get in contact with me and someone from my office can get you set up for, you know, a 15 minute consultation to talk about your needs and how we can help you. Uh, do I have a monitor on here? Somebody from my office on here? Maybe not, but um, Jenna, you fill this out. I'm putting it in the comments for you. And you can, um, uh oh. Hold on, y'all, putting this in the comments. If you want to contact us to talk about how we can help you, there is the link right there. Okay. Jamie, you need the boot camp. How do you sign up? Okay. So we're going to, we're actually working out the calendar now. Okay. And you'll see the calendar for boot camp drop probably somewhere around the beginning um, of the month. So when you see that, Jamie, when you see them here in the group, be sure to get yourself registered. Um, if you just want general information, you, you can go to www.homecarestartupbootcamp.com and um, it just gives you generalized information, but it won't have the dates on there, okay? And uh, we're gonna change and revise a few things for this year. And there will be a uh, special pricing. So um, if you go on there, just get the information. Don't look at the pricing because we are gonna do some special things um, closer to the end of the year for next year's boot camp signups. So, um, you're going to get some time. Y'all know I'm queen of discount. I always like to give discounts and, and offers and things just to help you guys out. Kenita, you need the boot camp? Kenita, drop what state you're in in the comments, just so I know out of curiosity where you are. Um, most of you, the saturation in this group is typically from a general amount of states and like a majority of you are from probably 20 of the same states out of all 50. Um, and so we do the boot camp for the states that we have the largest response from. Like we don't, um, oh, you love me for that? Oh, I love y'all too. <laughs> I love y'all. Oh, girl, you in Georgia. You know we do a Georgia boot camp all the time. That's my state. That's my agency state. So definitely, definitely, definitely stay connected, Quinita. And I always go back. We go back and we check the thread uh, for people who we need to uh, reach out to. Um, um, depending on things you may have expressed interest in when we when we are posting for it, we'll tag you and things like that so you don't miss it. Awesome. Fellow Georgia home care agency owner. That's awesome. All right, you guys. So it's 4.15. I'm going to hop off of here. Um, I'm leaving my office early today because... I got to go food shopping for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I'm going to get out of here. Y'all see I'm I'm in uniform today. That means, what does that mean? When y'all see me in a uniform, y'all know that means we're busy. Right? You see me come in uniform, that means I have to prepare to go out, which means we're busy. Um, if I'm looking all cute and I, ain't, I don't have no uniform on and I'm just in my office, that means we good and, and, and staffing is good. And the nurse has got everything covered. But if you see Nurse T looking like Nurse T, that means Nurse T had to actually go out uh, for something uh, on a nursing level. All right. So, yes. Um, holiday time is coming, y'all. Holiday time is when agencies are the busiest. Not to mention COVID numbers are rising. Y'all, our phone has been ringing. Okay. We literally, y'all, okay, Nurse T, transparent Nurse T moment. Y'all know if anything I am always completely upfront, honest, and transparent with you guys. I don't ever get on here and act like we don't have things that happen. We don't have issues because I teach you how to work through them. So when you come across them yourselves, you know what to do. We had to refer a client out today to another agency because we did not have a staff member available to fill their particular hourly needs. Now, y'all know I'm sick to my stomach because Nurse T don't give away no no client. She don't, she, I ain't in the, in the business of giving away no money. We trying to make money, right? I teach y'all, you make money. You don't give away money. But the phones have been ringing off the hook. People are looking and they're needing care. People are coming out of nursing homes. They're coming out of rehab facilities because family members don't want them exposed. COVID numbers are going up. 
doctor's offices are calling, case managers are calling. That particular client who calls um, today, all right, need to care right away. Certain hours in the morning and certain hours in the evening, we did not have one caregiver available to do that seven days a week. Not that could start immediately. So we had to do what a what a good business owner does. See, I'm gonna tell y'all what y'all thirsty business owners do. Y'all thirsty business owners will be like, Well, um, I'm gonna come out, get your starter care, you know, do your assessment, get your service agreement signed, take their money. I'm not stuck. I'm going to just marinate on that. Take their money, right? Knowing you ain't got the staff to cover that case. Right? And then you scuffle around and, and, and try to last minute find anybody to fill the case. Then you end up with service failure. And you let that client down. First of all, you made them wait when they needed services. Second of all, you found anybody out of desperation and being thirsty. Y'all know I like that. Thirsty business owner. And you had a service failure because you, you hired just anybody to fill that case. We don't do that here. We don't do that here. We do what a good business owner would do, and that's how I teach, treat you guys, teach you guys to do. And you keep your clients first at all times. Yes, you want to keep your business cap on, but you want to keep your client first at all times. So what do we do? We refer them to another agency. There's actually another agency here in this office complex that I'm in, and I refer to her. I sure did. We couldn't help them right now. So I referred to an agency that could. Now, what did that do? That allows me to feel like I know I did the best thing in, in keeping that client first. I've also put a good name for myself in the community. Because guess what? Even though we couldn't feel her at that particular time, she may refer us to someone else just for being helping her, period, right? And... It strengthens the relationship with my fellow business owner. See, that's something y'all got to get used to, too. Thinking about competition. It ain't about competition. It ain't about saturation. It's like way more than enough out here for all of us. It's about domination of your lane. Dominating in your lane. Y'all, I did a live on that last year. It's not about saturation. It's about domination. It's about domination of your lane. And when you focus on that and when you run your business that way you don't worry about competition you're not afraid to cross refer because guess what she's gonna need me one day and who is she gonna think of first me and my agency so it strengthens relationships you guys have got to learn that this starts with relationship building not on the side of just you and referral outlets but also on the side of you and other businesses all right so let that sink in let that sink in so, y'all, I'm going to hop off of here. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Again, if you're checking this out on the replay, do drop your questions in the comments. We will get to them. If you guys are in need of your forms, grab them. They're 50% off, 73 forms in the pack. There's somebody in here you can scroll up and see that they gave an awesome and amazing testimony. I believe the policies and procedures discount code might still be working, too. Y'all better jump on that. It's 50% off. All right, so get the help you need in whatever way you can. Y'all be blessed. Have an awesome and amazing afternoon, and I will see you next time.